Family Gamer TV News, where we normally look through the week in gaming news and bring you what's important to you as families. Now, I say normally because this week we're doing a special episode and we've got a really huge event happening in the games industry next week. I wanted to talk to you about it. It's called E3. You might have heard of it. It happens every year. Um, so it's happening next week in Los Angeles. It stands for Electronic Entertainment Expo, and it's the kind of huge industry event, um, huge show floor where all the big companies and console producers show off their new games, Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo, they'll all be kind of competing with each other to make exciting announcements about upcoming games to get um, customers excited about uh, games for their consoles. Now older players will be really interested in the big games like Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, Halo 5, um, that's a huge one, and Destiny which is the new game from the studio that made Halo originally. Um, it's a big kind of massively multiplayer game. Um, very, very exciting, very big budget, uh, so there'll be a lot of news about that. But obviously that's for more mature players, those are uh, typical shooter games that older players tend to enjoy. But what about younger players and families? Now, probably the biggest games for families that will be at E3, or the ones uh, that we're most excited about, are the new Skylanders and Disney Infinity games that have finally been announced quite recently, in fact, only a couple of months ago. Um, so, the Skylanders game, it's the fourth in the main series. Skylanders Trap Team, it's called. Now, um, the new mechanic in this game is that you have these, um, as well as the normal figurines, which are the, the physical characters that you can put on the portal and play with in the game, you've also got these things called trap toys. Now, what they do is they let you capture villains from the game and have them kind of digitally moved into the trap. So, um, kind of like a Pokeball in Pokemon, you know, you catch the Pokemon and then it's inside the Pokeball, you can carry it around and then you can use it. Same kind of principle here, you capture the villains and then you've got them in the trap and you can use them yourself, almost as if you had the figurine. Um, so that's pretty cool, there's going to be a new portal for that, loads of new figurines and this is what we'll see at the show, we'll probably see loads of new characters, these new um, trap masters, more of these playable villains and even some of the old Skylanders in new poses as well there'll be lots to look out for. There have also been rumours that there might be vehicles in this game. It's proven quite popular um, recently with the Angry Birds karting game and obviously Mario Kart um, is a big deal at the moment. So we'll be looking for that and we'll let you know if we see it. Now obviously we'll be hands on with the game. So if there is any new news about Skylanders Trap Team, you'll know it straight away. and We'll be able to tell you what the game is like to play. On the other side of things, obviously Disney Infinity 2.0 edition, so it's only the second in the Disney Infinity series, but same kind of principle as Skylanders, you've got these physical figurines, obviously the difference is that these are all Disney characters, and this one has a Marvel focus, Disney owns um, Marvel, so they're able to use the licenses. Um, so we've seen characters like Iron Man and Black Widow, and we'll see more of those, but we may also see some non-Marvel characters. So the trailer had Stitch from Lilo and Stitch, who obviously isn't a Marvel character, he's Disney through and through. Um, we've also had Maleficent and Merida confirmed, so we should see them hopefully on the show floor, hopefully we'll get to have a go. There have also been rumours of other non-Marvel characters, for instance we've got um, Donald Duck, Tinkerbell, Big Hero 6, Stitch, Lilo and Stitch, uh, Spider-Man, Venom, Iron Fist and Guardians of the Galaxy, so a good mix of, of Marvel and non-Marvel characters that will appear in this game. And again, like with Skylanders, it will be hands-on. So we'll let you know what the game is like to play. Um, we'll bring you lots of video updates. Um, so stay tuned for that. Now, Nintendo's big news recently is that they've been thinking of jumping on the bandwagon with this physical figurines thing, um, with their Nintendo figurine platform. Um, so when they announced this uh, a few weeks ago, they said there'd be more info at E3, so we can definitely expect to hear more about it. But basically, same kind of principle as Skylanders and Disney Infinity, physical characters, except these ones are obviously Nintendo branded and they can be used across multiple games. So you don't have to buy new game, new portal, loads of new characters. They're kind of more optional add-ons, it seems. And we should find out what games they'll be compatible with at E3. We should hopefully, we'll hear a big long list. Um, but we do know that Super Smash Brothers, at least, is one of them. So we should see more of that, maybe some examples of what characters that be. Um, now, Nintendo isn't actually having a live press conference like Sony and Microsoft are. They're having a digital event that'll be live streamed during E3. So they'll pre-record it, it'll all be very um, very polished and produced, um, but they'll still be announcing games and the like, so it'll be very similar to the information that we'll get out of the other press conferences. Now, they'll talk more about this Nintendo figurine platform, but hopefully we'll also hear about some more Wii U games. As I said, some people have written off the Wii U, but with Mario Kart doing well, hopefully, 
Nintendo announces a long list of Wii U games that'll kind of pick up the pace and get people more excited about it. Um, we've already heard about games like Zelda and Yarn Yoshi, so they should speak more about those. Um, hopefully some new announcements as well. We'll probably also hear more about 3DS games, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, which were recently announced should come out later this year, and Pokemon Art Academy as well, which looks really, really cool. Uh, and then there are cross-platform games as well, Sonic Boom and Super Smash Brothers, as I already said. Um, Sonic Boom in particular should have like a full reveal for it. We've learned that the Wii U version is called Rise of Lyric, that's the subtitle, and it's more of a, a 3D action adventure game with some speed, some exploration kind of mixed in, and it's got co-op as well, which should be really cool for big families who like to play together, uh, like mine. And then the 3DS version is subtitled Shattered Crystal, and that is a 2D platformer more like the original Sonic games, so a more traditional kind of feel to it. Older players will appreciate that more because it's more like what they remember Sonic being. Um, and then uh, Nintendo is also hosting a Super Smash Brothers um, tournament, and they're going to live stream that. That's being held in LA, but they're going to stream it on the YouTube channel. So if you're a big fan of Smash Brothers and you like the Nintendo characters uh, fighting each other, then you can check that out uh, and see who wins. Now, obviously, there are always rumors that Nintendo is going to announce new hardware and things. Um, there may be a new handheld, but it's completely rumor. Um, and there might, in fact, only be a tiny chance that they would do that, that they would replace the, uh, the 3DS because they've got this Nintendo figurine platform. So even if they were going to replace the 3DS, which I'm sure they're working on something, they won't announce it just yet, probably. They'll probably want to push that forward a bit. Although they'll definitely want to still be developing stuff. They'll want to be keeping their momentum that they have in the handheld space. Obviously, Sony's got the Vita. Now, as for Sony, uh, they'll have lots of PS4 stuff to talk about. Obviously, the console is still brand new. People will want to hear that it's worth a purchase, or if they've already bought one, that it was worth them getting it on day one and that they've got a reason to have uh, supported Sony by buying a PlayStation. Um, there'll be some big budget games. Um, probably most of them will be quite mature, though. We're particularly interested in Uncharted 4. Uncharted is a great series, so we're excited to hear more about that. Um, I think that's coming out of the holiday season this year, so they should have more information on it. Um, we're also excited to hear what Bend Studio is doing for the Vita. They're the people who made Uncharted Golden Abyss, so the Vita version of the Uncharted games. Um, hopefully they'll be working with Naughty Dog again. Maybe we'll see a uh, The Last of Us on the Vita, maybe even a spin-off like Uncharted Golden Abyss. Uh, we can only hope. Uh, and speaking of The Last of Us, we'll probably also see The Last of Us Remastered, because that's coming out soon. That's the PS4 um, reworking of The Last of Us, kind of making it more high definition and stuff like that. Um, which hopefully will be um, a little bit cleaner than the uh, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, which was the PS4 version of Tomb Raider. Now, on the lower budget side, there are plenty of indie games coming out for the PS4. Sony's got a really great relationship with independent developers. And um, among these games are some that will be more appropriate for families. Um, so keep an eye out for Hohokum, Fez. Uh, the Witness, and obviously here at Family Gamer TV, we will be looking at Minecraft, um, which we're big fans of. The PS4 version of that is due out in August, and the Vita version as well. So we'll get to see um, what the differences are between them. Now, speaking of the Vita, expect to see, um, for instance, PlayStation Vita Pets has only just come out, and uh, that's a really great game for kids, kind of similar to Nintendo, but with a, an adventure um, alongside it as well. And we should see some of these Vita versions of games that originally came out on the home consoles, like um, Child of Light, the recent kind of fairy tale RPG from Ubisoft. There's a Vita version of that coming out soon. And Ratchet and Clank HD Trilogy, which originally came out on PS3, is also coming to Vita. A great game for playing on your Vita as well, out and about. Now, Sony is also working on its Project Morpheus, which is its virtual reality headset designed to kind of to rival the Oculus Rift. Um, now, they haven't really announced um, full games for the Project Morpheus, or they haven't announced many, so hopefully at E3 we'll see a big list of virtual reality games for us to play on the PS4. Um, expect to see some kind of different cool stuff designed just for virtual reality. I'm thinking a good studio for this would be Media Molecule. We know they're working on something for the PS4, we don't know if it's going to be virtual reality or not, but it would be really cool if they came up with something, because um, they're quite an inventive studio. Now, over on Microsoft's side of things, they haven't got a virtual reality headset, but they have got Kinect and Smart Glass. So they haven't been um, kind of sitting on their laurels. They've been working on new stuff as well. Uh, Project Spark is particularly interesting. You can control this with either Smart Glass or Kinect, so motion control or with a tablet. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a toolkit for making your own games. 
Uh, it's been in beta for a while now, but we should see more of kind of upcoming features and the kinds of things people have been doing with it at E3. They'll want to show it off because they've been putting a lot of energy into it. Now, Microsoft recently announced that they would be selling the Xbox One without a Kinect for people who didn't want to have the Kinect controller. But the Kinect is still, it's quite a big part of some people's lives, especially families who like to have the more kind of active games like Kinect Sports and stuff. Um, we're particularly interested in Fantasia Music Evolved. Obviously, we love uh, Disney stuff. This is a motion-controlled music kind of rhythm game, I think, from Disney uh, based on the Fantasia film. Now, Microsoft has also been doing experiments in the area of interactive TV. Now, I say experiments, but Rabbids Invasion has just been renewed for a second series, so it's obviously doing quite well. Uh, maybe we'll see more about the second series at E3. Maybe we'll see ideas for interactive TV that they might try out. If it's doing well, it looks like they'll start some new series. Now, on more traditional kind of game side of things from Microsoft, Fable Legends will likely be a Peggy 15, but it might be interesting for older gamers and their families because it's got co-op. So if you've got some kind of teenagers who aren't quite ready for the very mature Peggy 18 games, but they want something to play together, Fable Legends could be worth a look. There's also Sunset Overdrive, which technically is a shooter, but it's very colorful. You don't kill humans, as far as I can tell. You kind of kill mutants instead. There doesn't seem to be much blood and gore. And it's from the same people who made Ratchet and Clank, which are also technically shooters, but are Peggy 3 and Peggy 7 rated. So um, nothing to worry about there. So keep an eye on Sunset Overdrive. See if we get a rating for it. Uh, get some more footage and see what you think of it. Now, uh, Microsoft also recently confirmed that Forza Horizon 2 was going to be coming to the Xbox One and Xbox 360. Now, not everyone likes racing games, but this one is particularly interesting because uh, the original Forza Horizon was a Peggy 12 and did extremely well in the charts for kind of months after it came out. Um, the Peggy 12 category, as I've said before, is very, very sparse. Um, there aren't many games that are aimed at that age bracket. So it's really good to see when one does, and especially when it does well. So if you've got um, kind of adolescent, teenage kids, keep an eye out for Forza Horizon. Finally, from Microsoft, we may well hear more about this Games with Gold uh, promotion that's just started on Xbox One, where if you have an Xbox Live subscription, um, an Xbox Live Gold subscription, you can download games for free. Uh, this month, for instance, you can download Max and the Curse of Brotherhood, uh, which, as I've spoken about in another video, is pretty interesting, uh, especially for families. Now, it's not only the console producers who get their own press conferences. Uh, in fact, Ubisoft, which is a really, really huge publisher with studios all over the world, um, known for games like Rayman and Assassin's Creed, they get their own press conference as well. Now, their big games, again, are more in the mature category. They've got Assassin's Creed Unity, Far Cry 4, um, definitely aimed at older players. Um, but there's one game in particular that I've got my eye on. It's a puzzle adventure game called Valiant Hearts The Great War. And I think this might be better for, for younger players, maybe not kids, but maybe teenagers. Um, based in the First World War, and it's based on letters that were written at the time. So it's got this kind of educational aspect to it, but it's kind of a cool puzzle adventure game. So if you've got kids who are interested, who are learning about um, the two world wars, and they want to know more in a, in a kind of way that excites them, this might be worth considering. Now, the other publisher who gets their own press conference is EA, obviously another huge publisher. They're well known for their series like Battlefield and FIFA, which again, Battlefield is obviously aimed at more mature gamers. Um, but apparently they're announcing six new games, so hopefully at least one of those will be more appropriate for families. And uh, we'll bring you the news as we get it, so you'll be the first to know. Um, but there's one game in particular, obviously, that we've got our eye on, uh, or I have in particular, and that's The Sims 4. Um, Sims 3 came out in 2009, so fans of the series have been waiting a good few years for this sequel to come out. It's due out later this year, so I can only uh, expect that at E3 we'll hear a release date for it, a, a confirmed release date for when we'll be able to buy that. Um, we've seen a couple of videos recently about the game, but they focused on the tools um, used to create the Sims, the tools used to build the houses. We haven't seen much on actual gameplay, and there's this interesting new emotions mechanic and um, this new multitasking mechanic that I've spoken about before in my news videos. So I'm interested to see some actual gameplay. Maybe we can even get some hands-on time with the game, and uh, we'll let you know what it's like to play. Now, outside of the press conferences, of course, there will be even more games on the show floor, and we'll be there to bring you information on all the interesting ones we find, especially the ones that are particularly aimed at families. Uh, for instance, Lego Minifigures Online is confirmed to be at E3. Um, that's out later this year, and uh, the 
open beta starts uh, this month. That's the family-friendly uh, MMO, massively multiplayer online game from the LEGO group. Um, so we should see more of that. Uh, we'll hopefully see what it's actually like to play. We've kind of only seen pictures and things so far. Um, so if we get a chance to play that, we'll let you know what it's like and you can decide whether it's worth jumping in. Now, obviously, it's impossible to list all of the games we're looking forward to hearing about at E3. There are going to be hundreds of them, and there will be a good few surprises as well. Uh, the companies like to keep their secrets, so they like to hold back a few key surprises for, for kind of the end of the press conferences and things like that. But we'll let you know as soon as we know what's coming. We'll let you know all the exciting news as we get it. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to keep updated on E3. Uh, as I said, E3 is very exciting for the industry. If you've got kids who play games or if you play games yourselves, these are the games that are going to be on the wish lists come the holiday season. So you'll definitely want to keep an eye out to make sure you stay up to date uh, with what's coming. As I said, we'll be there and we'll let you know. So make sure you subscribe. And if there's anything in particular you want to hear about, let us know in the comments. Uh, that's all from me. I'll be back soon.